IMSA fans, I have one of the great professors of the paddock, one of my race engineering mentors and inspirations, Jeff Brown with the CrowdStrike by APR team. As we did at Indianapolis for the first time with our friend Brandon at BMW, Jeff's gonna tell us what we need, what every driver, every team is looking for to make speed, to go as quickly as possible with the unique challenges here of Road Atlanta, this being Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta, known for its hills, its lefts, its rights, its dives. This place is unlike any other, Jeff. Give folks a general idea of what you as a race engineer are thinking about how to make speed. What do you have to do? Well, the, the thing is there's no rest here. You know, it's, it's such a twisty, turny track, which you downforce. And in a prototype like this, it's all about downforce. And it's not how much downforce you can make, it's how much you can balance. Ooh. You know, you know, we've talked, uh, I, I know some people know about center of pressure, and it's, it's where the downforce happens. You can't have too much on the front wheels, the car will spin out. You can't have too much downforce on the rear wheels, the car won't turn. So what we have to do is get the maximum downforce we can, but more importantly, even get it balanced correctly. And that's what we'll be working on here. Unlike a place like Daytona, where straight line speed and we'll take downforce away to get a lap time, here it's all about maximum downforce, maximum grip on all of these 12, 13 corners that we have here. So let's look at this awesome Areca 07 powered by a Gibson V8. This being the car, your guy, George Kurtz, yep. Ben Hanley, full season, yep. and this young punk, Nolan Siegel. Nolan Siegel yeah. Boy, he sure is impressive. Yep, for sure. This is something the three of them will be driving for 10 hours during this Motul Petit Le Mans event here. Talk about, you said balance. So knowing that you're going for as much quality downforce that you can get, you also have the mechanical side. You're trying to make this car be something that, as you said, balanced, where all four corners are providing maximum grip for the driver. How do you do that? Through the aero, through tires and suspension setup? Show folks what you're tuning. So first of all, you can see we have two, two of these fins. They're called dive planes. And we're allowed to run either this bottom one by itself or both of them as you see now. And because it's a high downforce track, we'll run both rear, I mean, both front dive planes. Um, everything else that you're seeing, the splitter shape, these uh, turning vanes here are all homologated. So we can't change the shape of those. We can change the height of those by just changing the ride height of the car to change the balance. But at this track, unlike Daytona, we'll run both, um, both front dive planes. Other than that, that's really all we can change. Like the, the, the openings here above the tires, these little flaps here are all homologated and we're not allowed to touch them. So in order to balance all of that downforce with the two in dive planes on the front, we go back to the rear. Because anytime you make a change at the front, you usually have to complement that with something at the back to maintain that balance. Again, yeah, that's the key is the balance. So we add a bunch of downforce there, we have to add a bunch of downforce back here too. And the only, we have a, a couple options here. We have the rear wing main plane angle, which is this, this element right here. We can change the angle of that. We can change the flap angle. It's a very small flap, but we can change the angle of that flap. And there's a gurney flap on top of the flap. We're also allowed to either, we can't change the height of it. We can either take it off or have it on. So at this place, we need the high downforce. We have the gurney flap on. We have a relatively steep angle to the rear uh, element to balance the dive planes. There's a, another flap, it's called the engine cover gurney, which is bolted right here, which we're allowed to either have on or off. Again, because of the high downforce we need, we have it on in this case. And tell folks, Jeff, about how this works here, because if you look from the back of the car, you look at the diffuser itself here and the strakes that are in the diffuser. Tell folks why you would run that engine cover gurney and what it does to help extract more air, faster air. Get them, get them all coached up here, Professor. As you know, teed that up well because you know what you're talking about. This gurney actually, as the air comes over the engine cover, it actually creates a low pressure here. The same way you'll see in your minivan, your SUV, where the air 
where the rear window gets dirty, it's because there's a low pressure there and the dust or dirt come there. So there's a low pressure area right here, like a vacuum that this gurney creates. And what that does is the air coming under this tunnel, which creates lots of downforce, is drawn rapidly into that low pressure area. So it makes the bottom of the car, which is a downforce producing inverted wing. It's a big, big wing. It draws that air, this gurney, draws that air harder and energizes the bottom of the car. Pulls it upwards. Which makes even more downforce. And so this little piece here is not like a spoiler you'd see on a NASCAR car, similar, but what it really does is energize the floor of the car. That's a really important piece. So we have the top side arrow as it's called with the rear wing, the dive planes, the splitter that's up front, yep. all hugely, this entire creature, if you look at it, especially from behind, you look at all the sculpting, you look at all the shapes, this is purely about aerodynamics here. And you think about all these tuning tools, all the top side arrow, the real place you can play with the underside arrow, as you mentioned, is that gurney flap here, the engine cover piece that helps extract more air, curve that upwards, more suction being caused by it. It's pretty smart stuff by our friends at Areca. Exactly, it's all about managing that air. Um, you know, those are the only things we can change. Orca had to come up with the basic design and homologate that, and that's what makes the whole rest of the car work. So we're just trying to tune really not so much the overall balance again, I mean the overall downforce, but how that's, how that's balanced. And it also interacts with the mechanical setup yes. of the car. Tell folks about that because beneath the bodywork here, we have springs and dampers and all kinds of fun stuff. That That's the part I think you love tuning the most, Jeff uh, it's It's fun, it's fun. It's because it all has to work together, right? The, the mechanical setup has to work with the aerodynamic setup. And the you're trying harmony. to, yeah, you're trying to control the platform of the car because as you talked about, the, the underwing here is very sensitive and it's very sensitive to the height of the, yes. off the ground because the air is being squeezed in underneath it and then being extracted out the back. And so it's, it's, it's like a, it, it is a Venturi effect. And so the height of that ground, how, how much space there is for the air to squeeze underneath is very critical. So the ride height of the car is very critical to that balance. The ride height is controlled by the springs. There's four springs on each, uh, there's four springs on the car, one on each wheel. And then there's what we call a third spring, which is a spring on each front, on the front axle and the rear axle that control the stiffness of the car in a vertical motion or heat. Controls the ride height here. Uh, that, uh, we're gonna do a third spring as a whole separate topic you one of do these that. days. You should but, do that. Uh, master of damping right here. But all of this comes together in a way to give George, Nolan, and Ben something that from stint to stint they're comfortable and happy with. Let's close on this. So we've got a 10 hour race. Start in the morning, run into night. There's temperature changes, grip changes, track gets dirty, all kinds of stuff happens. What are you able to do to tune the car during the event? You're not able to run out and make wing no. changes and such, but what can you do as a race engineer to tell uh, the crew to do to affect the car's handling to suit their needs? Not much. Tire pressures. It's about it. I mean, we don't have, even in the P2 car, unlike a GTP car, we don't have adjustable anti-roll bars in this car. Again, not homologated, not part of the rule package. We have a brake bias knob. We have tire pressures. If it really got bad, or it sudden downpour, sudden change, this rear section of the car, you can actually see the, the mechanics still have one of the T-bars in here, which two turns of that, and this whole back section with all the parts aerodynamic parts that we just described comes off and another one goes right on and connects You'll have a, a second one set with a change in downforce, do that quick change during a pit stop. Exactly. That's really the only thing you can do 
and then these Michelin tires, working with them, trying to keep them as happy as possible. And that's something you're chasing throughout the race, as is every race engineer. Again, yep. temperature could start high, could be low, could be a lot of things. You're always looking at this next set of Michelins that's going on. Am I going up on my starting pressures, front and rear? Am I going down? Yep. It's a constant tuning you're doing. It is, and it's, you know, we'll have some sets of tires that we'll have scrubbed mm. and some sets that aren't. And in this particular race, we're going to have to double stint three sets, maybe four sets of tires. So when do you deploy your double stint tires? When do you run your scrub tires? When, you know, what tire pressures are you going to run? It's different on a scrub set of tires or when you're going to double stint, you might have to start a little bit lower so they don't get, the pressures don't get out of control. So we're constantly monitoring that. Luckily we have telemetry being sent back from the car that we can look yep. at what's happening. If you like puzzles, become a race engineer. But <laughs> if you like never solving a puzzle, that's right. Become right. the next Jeff Brown race engineer because it is a constantly evolving thing during every race. We've got 10 hours here at Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta on Saturday. Cannot wait for that. And why don't we close on something that's not technical but just needs more appreciation? Okay. Our shooter here, Nick Leo, if he steps back. Isn't this one of the most beautiful cars on pit it lane? Is. A big credit to our guy, George Kurtz, Proud Strike, the whole APR team. It is uh, cool. Beautiful livery Look at that here. Falcon. And if you got a second, you should check out the truck too. It's yeah, the cool. truck is, uh, the truck is the pretty Falcon amazing. And yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Now, do we have you do any engineering on the transporter, Jeff? Have you made this faster than everyone else's no, trucks? No, it looks pretty faster than everybody okay. else's. I think we'll give the graphics people at, at CrowdStrike uh, a big uh, kudos for that one. That looks that's pretty sharp looking. That big Falcon is. I might have to crawl under and see if you've got some uh, adjustable dampers on there or something, Jeff. I bet that's how, that's coming soon. If not. Luckily, it's not homologated, so all you right, can do whatever right. you want. <laughs> this is our guy, Jeff Brown, one of our favorite folks in the paddock. Always makes us smarter. Thanks again, Jeff, for all your insights. All right, always fun, Marshall. I appreciate it. Make sure you follow along with us on IMSA's official YouTube channel and follow IMSA Racing on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and X. We're going to be doing some pretty cool stuff with some pretty cool people with some pretty cool race cars. Visit IMSA.com to hear the action called live and download the official IMSA app to follow the timing and scoring information as the sessions take place.